On the 6th of February in 2023, an earthquake struck southern and central Turkey and northern and western Syria. It is one of the strongest ever recorded in Turkey. Major cities were destroyed and more than 30,000 people died tragically. Imagine a world where buildings can withstand the harshest of natural disasters, a feat accomplished by innovative designs and technologies utilized in Japan. But what if I told you that this same level of protection could be brought to Turkey? In this video, we're going to explore what Turkey can learn from Japan's earthquake-proof buildings and how they could transform the way that they can build them for the future. Welcome to the Seeker's Edge, where we seek knowledge that will give you an edge in life. So let's begin. Japan is known for its strict building codes and high level of preparedness for earthquakes, which is reflected in the design of its tower blocks. In order to ensure the safety and well-being of its citizens, Japan has incorporated two levels of resilience in the construction of its tower blocks. The design of tower blocks in Japan is specifically engineered to withstand earthquakes, which are common in the region due to its location, to the Pacific Ring of Fire. With the frequent occurrence of earthquakes, it's essential that the buildings in Japan are designed to withstand the forces generated during an earthquake, which is why the construction of tower blocks in Japan is subject to strict building codes and standards to ensure their seismic resistance. The design of tower blocks in Japan takes into account two levels of resilience, both of which are crucial for ensuring the safety of inhabitants. These levels are as follows. Withstand smaller earthquakes. 1. The first level of resilience is designed to withstand smaller earthquakes without significant damage to the building. This means that the building should be able to withstand the forces generated during an earthquake without collapsing or sustaining major damage. This is accomplished through the use of advanced materials, techniques, and engineering methods that help distribute the forces generated during an earthquake evenly across the structure of the building, withstand extreme earthquakes. The second level of resilience is designed to protect human lives during extreme earthquakes, which means that even if the building sustains significant damage, it should be able to remain standing long enough to allow the occupants to evacuate safety. This is achieved through the use of seismic retardant structures, such as reinforced concrete frames and steel braces, which help to absorb the energy generated during an earthquake to help prevent the building from collapsing. Additionally, Buildings are often equipped with earthquake early warning systems and emergency communication systems to help ensure the safety of the occupants in case of an earthquake. So how do the Japanese build their towers to withstand such forces of nature? Firstly, the Japanese make use of shock absorbers. Buildings in Japan are designed to withstand earthquakes, and a key component of that design is the ability to absorb seismic energy. When an earthquake occurs, the ground shakes and it creates energy that can cause damage to buildings. The goal is to absorb that energy and to reduce the amount that is transferred to the building. One method used to reduce the amount of energy transferred to the building is called seismic isolation. This process involves installing shock absorbers or bearings that are designed to absorb the seismic energy. The shock absorbers or bearings are positioned between the building's structure and the foundation. The shock absorbers or the bearings are usually made of a material that has a low stiffness such as rubber or lead and are designed to deform or compress under load which allows them to absorb a significant amount of seismic energy before it's transferred to the building. Another common method of seismic isolation is to install rubber pads underneath the building columns. These rubber pads serve as shock absorbers, allowing the buildings to move vertically while reducing the amount of energy transferred to the structure. This reduces the likelihood of damage to the building and helps to protect the lives of those inside. By incorporating these types of shock absorbers into the design of their buildings, engineers in Japan have been able to increase the level of resilience against earthquakes. The goal is to ensure that the buildings are able to withstand not only smaller earthquakes, but also extreme earthquakes that occur less frequently, while still protecting human lives. Shock absorbers are not the only advanced technique that Japanese use. The Japanese use something called a top-to-toe resilience. In order to ensure that Japan's tower blocks are equipped to withstand earthquakes, the base of the building must be designed to be resilient. This typically involves reinforcing the foundation, adding additional supports, and taking other measures to ensure that the building is anchored firmly to the ground. These adaptations help to distribute the shock of an earthquake more evenly across the building and reduce that risk of damage. Another key component of top-to-toe resilience is the use of motion dampeners throughout the building. These devices are designed to reduce the amount of vibration that the building experiences during an earthquake, which helps to prevent the damage to the superstructure, which can otherwise lead to the building collapsing. Motion dampeners can be located at various points in the building, including the roof, walls, and the foundation. The primary purpose of motion dampeners is to reduce vibrations. This is accomplished by absorbing the energy of the seismic waves and converting it into heat, 
which helps to reduce the amount of stress in that building during an earthquake and can prevent damage to the structure. In addition to reducing vibrations, motion dampers also help to prevent damage to the superstructure, which is because they help distribute the shock of an earthquake more evenly across the building. By doing so, they reduce the risk of structural failure, and they help protect the building from damage. Another innovative approach to earthquake resistance in Japan is the use of liquid-filled bicycle pumps as dampers. These devices are filled with a dense liquid that can absorb and dissipate energy made by earthquakes. By doing so, they reduce the amount of vibration that the building experiences, and it helps to prevent damage to the structure. These dampers are relatively cheap and easy to install, making them a very popular choice for many building owners in Japan. In the process of designing and constructing buildings, there is often a balance between ensuring safety and creating an aesthetically pleasing structure, which is particularly true when it comes to tall tower blocks in areas prone to earthquakes. Engineers have to consider various factors, such as weight distribution, strength of materials, and seismic resistance of the building. There can be tensions between engineers and architects when it comes to designing buildings that are both beautiful and safe. Engineers are concerned with ensuring the building can withstand earthquakes and protect its occupants, while architects want to create a visually appealing structure. This can lead to disagreements about the design and materials used in the construction process. But Japanese engineers and architects have managed to find the right balance. One such solution is the use of protective mesh structures. The steel mesh used in buildings such as the Hakodate Future University serves as a fortification against earthquakes, adding an extra layer of resilience to the building's design. Incorporating seismic elements into the overall design of the building is a crucial aspect of seismic engineering in Japan. The use of mesh structures is a prime example of how engineers and architects can harmonize seismic solutions with the aesthetic design of the building. The mesh not only provides a functional solution to the potential damage caused by earthquakes, but also adds to the beauty of the building. In addition to its protective function, the steel mesh used in buildings like the Hakodate Future University also adds an extra touch of elegance to the building's design. The mesh structure creates a unique look that adds to the overall aesthetic appeal of the building. The use of protective mesh structures is a key example of how Japan's engineers and architects have successfully combined elegance and safety in their building designs. The steel mesh serves not only as a functional solution to the potential damage caused by earthquakes, but also adds an extra touch of beauty to the building's design. Another example of a building that combines elegance and safety is the Skytree Tower in Tokyo. This tower is a neo-futuristic style structure that stands at 634 meters tall. Despite its unique and attractive design, it's also equipped with seismic dampers that ensure its stability during earthquakes. The Skytree Tower in Tokyo serves as an example of how elegance and safety can be combined in the design of tower blocks in areas prone to earthquakes. The building's unique neo-futuristic style combined with its seismic dampers make it both visually appealing and safe for the occupants. Researching future earthquakes. The current buildings in Japan are top-notch. They're top-notch and they are earthquake resistant. But it's Japan's proactive approach that makes their buildings the best. Engineers and scientists are constantly researching and monitoring earthquakes to predict and prepare for the future ones that might happen. They're trying to understand how earthquakes behave and how they can be mitigated, which is crucial in making the design of tower blocks more resilient to future earthquakes. Despite the research, predicting earthquakes is a challenge, particularly for larger magnitude earthquakes that can have a significant impact on infrastructure and human lives. There's a lot to be learned about the mechanics of earthquakes and how to build structures that can withstand their power. One of the biggest questions in the field of seismic engineering is whether or not tomorrow's buildings will be able to withstand the largest of earthquakes unscathed. While current designs have made significant progress in improving the resilience of buildings, there is a lot of work to be done to ensure the safety of those who live and work in them. In conclusion, the goal of creating earthquake-proof buildings is an ongoing process, and Japan is leading the way with its innovative approach to seismic engineering. The combination of shock absorbers, toe-to-toe -to -toe resilience, and protective mesh allow buildings to withstand the seismic energy generated by earthquakes and protect human lives. Yahtzee. At the same time, architects and engineers strive to harmonize these safety elements with the overall design of the building, making them both functional and elegant. Despite the difficulty in predicting earthquakes of larger magnitude, ongoing research and testing of new technologies will continue to advance the field and create safer and more resilient structures for future generations. Thanks so much for watching the video. If you liked the video, please subscribe to The Seeker's Edge. Until next time.